More heavy rain is on the way for southern British Columbia. It will be the third storm in as many weeks. The CBC's Katie Nicholson is in the flood zone. She joins us live from Abbotsford. So, Katie, what's happening where you are? So we're in Huntington Village, just on the other side of the sandbags that the armed forces had erected. Uh, and this is where the water is now starting to move in. So we're, we're here right now because we don't know how long we can be. The water has started to really come in quickly across this road since we've been here. Uh, we've noticed that uh, it's really started to, uh, to encroach very quickly across the roads. This uh, has all happened in the last uh, half hour. Water's first started coming here around 9 o'clock. According to the people who work at this business, here, which is currently getting inundated. Uh, and I spoke with the owner, Wayne Elias. He says this is the second time he's been flooded in as many as two weeks. And it really feels from the other side of the sandbags watching this encroach on his business like uh, he's watching a, a slow moving train crash. Um, I asked him what he's planning on doing for the rest of the day. He says there's really nothing he can do right at this point. They've moved all of their gear to high ground as best they can. And it's essentially sitting and waiting. That's, that's what they're doing right now. He said he might even go home and watch a movie because what else can he do? It can take his mind off of it. I just want to just show you. Mm -hmm, um, sure. This is all the water that's coming across uh, from the Nooksack River, from Washington State. So that's that's mountain runoff, that is rainwater, and that is spillover from the Nooksack River that has moved across and uh, right here at Boundary Road and 2nd Avenue. The idea is that this uh, is going to flow towards that sandbag wall that the armed forces had erected and I spoke with the captain uh, with that organization or with that operation yesterday and he said they were pretty confident that what they put in place there should hold uh, but we heard from the mayor yesterday that he's very concerned about this runoff and he said people who live on the other side who are under an evacuation order really should leave their homes and they shouldn't count on those sandbags holding. And so, Katie, can we see that uh, uh, that sandbag wall? Can your camera operator show it to us, or is it yeah, a little I, too far to see? I don't know if see. you can zoom in. Yeah. It's sort of where you can see a line of sandbags. They're oh, yeah. all along the uh, the train tracks. So this is a blueberry field. This had completely flooded uh, two weeks ago. I was here last Saturday when people were pulling debris out of the out of the bushes there. Uh, someone's front porch had washed across the border and landed in there. There was a kid's swimming pool. So this is the kind of stuff that comes with the floodwaters, and already today. This looks very placid, but um, Sue, I'm just going to get you to get down a little bit lower there. You can sort of see, uh, once it grabs some flotsam, you can see how quickly this is moving. So it looks almost uh, peaceful, but when you actually see things moving, large pieces of lumber, for example, flying through here, you get a real sense of the power of the floodwaters. So this has been a slow encroachment, uh, and now it's picking up speed. It's really starting to overtop the road here. We are expecting uh, to be asked to leave this area pretty soon. Uh, and again, join uh, the rest of uh, the, the people who are on the other side uh, in that evacuation zone uh, where, again, people are being urged to leave. This might uh, actually, a lot of people have decided not to leave just yet. They are mm. packed and ready to go. They're really waiting and seeing what happens here. And perhaps now this might uh, encourage them to leave or perhaps they're going to put a lot of uh, a lot of uh, faith in the in the sandbag wall that has been erected because that is different this time yeah. around. There is a sandbag wall that is there in place. And I, and, I, and I know you have to leave, so I'll ask the next question uh, quickly because you probably do have to get out of there. What can we expect, though, for the flood zone in the coming days? Well, it, all bets are off. We know that there's probably about 100 more millimeters of rain that's going to descend. We're looking at two days of heavy, sustained rain coming to an area that can ill afford it. I, I just look around. There's really nowhere for this water to go. We already have a stretch of the Trans-Canada that was closed last night between Chilliwack and Abbotsford that uh, had water already on either side, almost up to the level of the road. Uh, tiger dams have had to go up. There it was an overnight operation. They're trying to salvage and keep that road operational at in some capacity once these waters uh, subside. There is still active sandbagging happening throughout the region because there's so much runoff. So, you know, anyone you ask, uh, be it the mayor, be it um, the minister of public safety, there is just this element of uncertainty right now. Nobody really can say for sure what's going to happen. What they can say is that there are resources on the ground. There are pledges to help and support as much as possible. Uh, but right now, all British Columbians are looking at BC roads. They're looking at uh, the various uh, Twitter accounts for the most breaking information as to sort of what to expect. 
impact uh, what where roads are being closed, where there are washouts, landslides. That's that's really where we're at right now uh, in this province. Is just sort of waiting for uh, the next sort of emergency edict to come down. And that's really how it's going to be now for the next couple of days, particularly because no one can say for sure how this next storm system is going to affect the, the region. And it's a widespread region. Yeah. All right, Katie. Thank you. That is the CBC's Katie Nicholson live in Abbotsford, British Columbia.